I'm doing something a little bit different today. Uh, what I'll be doing is going over the problem, giving you some time to work on it on your own, and then going over my solution. Uh, so let's get into it. This one is called Game of Two Stacks. Alexa has two stacks of non-negative integers, stacks A and stack B with a bunch of numbers, where index zero denotes the top of the stack. Alexa challenges Nick to play the following game. In each move, Nick can remove one integer from the, ta the top of either stack A or B, uh, and Nick keeps a running sum of the integers he's removed from the both stacks. And Nick is disqualified if he at any point has a running sum greater than some integer x given at the beginning of the game. Nick's final score is the total number of integers he has removed from two stacks. So not the sum, but the actual total number that were removed. Uh, find the maximum possible score Nick can achieve. Um, and this is the same thing as saying the maximum number of integers he can remove without being disqualified. Okay, so... I will let you, I have a link for this problem in the description, feel free to check it out, and we'll be getting to my solution in a little bit. Okay, so there's a very tight restriction on um, execution for this, so I decided to do everything in place, so I'm actually going to be reusing some of the space within the stacks A and B. So the first thing to note is my strategy here, which is to run a cumulative sum for the first array and also the B array. And so what that's going to look like, so I have a, I guess an example. So my running sum, so it would turn this into, you know, a four, a two, and uh, let's say my X is equal to 10. So I have, a, I have an upper limit of 10, basically. So we have four and two. So we just add the two onto the four That's a six. And then we add four on top of that. That's a ten, and that is meeting the requirement. So the um, the game is that you can you cannot exceed the number x, but you can meet it. So this is actually valid. So basically, anything after this won't really matter. But because I'm doing it in place, technically there's a six and a one here. But I'm not really using that. It's just um, this space that I'm uh, making. Fun I'm, I'm actually using uh, for the b. We have a similar a similar idea here. So we have a two. We have a three. And then we uh, we would add eight, but that would, that would violate the rule. So at this point, this, the function would, would stop, and uh, there would be an eight and a five after that. But I'm, again, I'm not using that space at all. So I'm trying, I'm gonna like put a bunch of space here. Like I'm not, I don't care about that stuff. All I'm doing is I'm having a, an iterator and uh, an i, and while it's less than the length, I will grab the number, I will check what the last number was, and if the number is uh, if it's at the very first position, then this is actually undefined. So I'll just put a zero in there just to uh, account for that one situation. Then I look at what the potential sum would be if I added the two together. And if it's greater than the X, then that violates the situation. I just break um, the loop at that point. Um, otherwise, I will add the sum to that position and I'm also iterating on I in one line. And basically, I'm doing the exact same thing for B. So A and B are basically doing the same thing. I have a J instead of an I for that, but that's effectively the same thing. Okay, so in this situation, doing them by themselves, it is uh, you're not really taking into account both of them. So we will do that in the next step. But at this point, I want to just keep track of two things. One, what is my best count, which is effectively the length of the array. Um, so this one would be length three, this one would be length two at this point, just because like by themselves, that's the best I've seen so far. Um, and this one would be probably the one that wins out because it's length three. And now I will go into trying to combine them. So how would we do that? One thing to note is because of how summation works, you actually don't need to keep track of adding them together one at a time. So what I mean by that, if I go up to up here. So if I do f this uh, example of four, then two, then that's the same difference as me going four, then this two, and then this other two. Adding the two early versus later is the same difference. So here's the idea. We're going to loop backwards through A. So we're going to start with 10. And then we're going to loop forwards through B. So we're basically um, going to be seeing what would happen if we basically didn't have the last element of A added. So if we just remove that and we see, okay, what would happen if we removed this last one and started adding in from B, what would happen? 
and the, the potential here is that we would we would have a total length that's actually greater than just a by itself if we remove the 10 because remember this last digit is the best of a so we can't fit any more in or maybe we could so how do we know that we would take this 10 and we'd see can we add anything from b again it has to be from the top of b can we add anything from the top of b that would um allow me to fit in more uh to not violate the rule in this case 10 is the max so in this case um we couldn't do that so we would have to go to the next one which is six so if we go from six we can say okay can we add anything from b from the top yes we can add the two plus six is eight so that doesn't violate the rule then we go to the next one six plus three nine it doesn't violate it and then that's the end of the array so this actually would allow us to have a length of two plus another length of two so this is actually better than the the best max that we've seen so far so we would actually um, store four as our best count here that's kind of the idea and uh, I don't need to keep going through the number more examples here but that's basically what we're going to be doing so I'm effectively looping backwards through the first array because I'm keeping everything in place I kind of have to finagle with the indices indices so my a index and my b index are going to be my uh, place my index for looping backwards and forwards basically so my a index will be going backwards so I start with the i minus one and because I have the i up here as um, a variable the the position that i is currently in is actually one more than where the than, than where it's supposed to be which is like this 10 so the i in this situation is actually going to be on the six kind of um, so I need to start with i minus one which is two Okay, so you go backwards and I grab the current sum. And again, that's the current sum being the the index, the value at the current index. And then I will go through B forwards. And I have my B index here, which is uh, this B index zero. And what I'm doing is actually establishing the B index outside of the loop because we already know that this when we go when we iterate through it we've, we're kind of like going in a, in a way that's additive you know like cumulative so we don't need to like keep starting from the beginning again because the last number we saw was the, the best that it was from the last time uh, and that's why i don't need to like reset this zero i can just keep using it it's just a minor efficiency thing okay so your b index starts with um well it starts with zero and basically i have to have this condition to be under less than j because again i'm doing everything in place with the original so i need to make sure that my j which is currently on the eight um doesn't you know you don't go past that basically all right so I, I check my current sum which is from the a and i add my b summation and i check to make sure that it is less than or equal to x and while that's true i just keep um going through this array until i get to the end basically or you know whenever that rule is violated and then I will check my my possible best count. So I'm currently keeping a max of the A or B by itself. But now here's where we actually check the combination of the two. And the current B index is effectively like the length that it is in because we've incremented one more past it at this point. So I don't need to like do any any finagling here. But with the A index, I'm actually currently on the the position. So I need to actually add one on top of that. So this is just like a one-off thing. Uh, but this will give you the proper length and then you can see if it is the best because you can check the max between the best and the possible best and Set that to your best count and you run through all possibility all combinations of the two and eventually you will get your best count Which will be your answer and I can run some code here and see how that looks So it works on tests of course and it, this does also work on the submission and these last test cases are what gives you what was giving me a lot of trouble because I had to be really really super efficient I tried so many things to like um, be efficient but eventually just keeping everything in place was the, the way of, do, of doing it and before I forget I need to do the big O notation so um, if we look at the top here the very worst case scenario is running through the entire array so we're gonna call this uh, big O of n and we're basically doing the same thing with the second array except it's technically a different array with potentially a different length so we're going to call that big O of M and then if we go down to this loop we have uh, the potential of like going through the big O of M again or sorry N again um, for this while loop even though it's within it's like a loop within a loop 
because I've set up the B index to basically ensure that the most it goes through is at least one time or at most one time. This is actually just a big old M. It's constrained to be just the, the full length of the array. So in the end, we have what boils down to a big O of N times two plus big O of M times two, which if you reduce it down to its simplest form is just N plus M. And I think that's pretty much as succinct and as quick as you can get because you're basically looking at every element in the array. Um, I don't think it can be any more efficient than that really um, as a worst case scenario. Uh, anyway, I hope that was helpful. If you find this format useful uh, where I don't like show you my struggle <laughs> to get to the answer and you just like get the, the solution and my explanation, uh, if that format works for you, please let me know in the comments, do a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next video.